This is weird. I don't, I don't like this. I can't look you in the face while we're doing this now. <laughs> it's I can't. Too long. Right. <laughs> Stop looking at me. I don't like it. We're in the same room. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, there's going to probably be a lot of echo. This is the, the only the second time we've done this in four years. Four years in two podcasts. We are profesh. <laughs> it's really weird. <laughs> I'm not used to being able to see you. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. I mean, it's weird because I've had to get dressed to do the podcast. I don't like it. Wait, what? I mean, I'm still naked, but... That is why I now can't look at you. <laughs> Because I didn't realise that until I turned around. <laughs> right, where are we? Co-directors, whip it. Good film. Uh, it's not tragically sad for once. It's, it's a really fucking nice change. Yeah, I really like this. Uh, whip it, what we got? It is uh, Drew Barrymore's first, and actually, as we, I've only just discovered, <laughs> her only feature film. I thought she'd done, like, a bunch, but... Um, no, she's literally done Whip It and that's it. That's quite a good... Um, it's a good record to have, though, isn't it? To make... Like 100% of the films she's made have been good. Yeah, like, it's a really good thing to nail it. Like, imagine if we did one episode of our podcast, nailed it, rather than struggling through the 100-odd episodes we've probably made by now. I just did a sicky burp. That's why I looked a bit pained just then. <laughs> I know, it was actually... Because the beer repeated on me. It's, re- it's really weird being able to see you and knowing that this is going to be on the internet. I don't like it. That's usually safe for our other videos. Uh, whip it. What's whip it about? I didn't know what it's about. A, a roller. They say derby. I'd say derby. I say derby because you know it's we have better the language. Right. <laughs> yeah, fuck off. It's hard. No. Um, yeah, I didn't know what roller derby, der- derby, derby, as I've now decided to call it, is. Now I really want to give it a go. It looks That's amazing. The thing, a, genuinely, there's a guy I work with who is a roller derby referee. Are you joking? Like, yeah, he does it every couple of weeks. Where? I have no fucking idea. I think it's, like, all over the country. Like, it's quite a popular thing, I think. I am currently searching for a roller derby What's near really me. weird is you're searching it, and I don't have to bother searching it as well, because I can see it. Although yeah. Southampton's not that useful for me. Southampton City Rollers. We are Southampton's one and only roller derby league. We're open to all humans <laughs> aged 18 and over. What the fuck? I might have to give this a look, you know, because it looks so much fun. They're all women. That is true. They all look fucking nuts as well. I'm just trying to see if I recognise him. I don't think I do. Hello, nice to meet you. Anyway, uh, roller derby. What is it? It's a thing where people, they're on roller skates. They race around the track. It, it, I thought it did a really good job of like explaining the rules. Of, um, well, I think that was good because they get Ellen Page's character, whose name escapes me. Uh, she is called, obviously, Bliss. Obviously, that is a perfectly normal name. Ah, America. Yeah, but I think having her as someone who'd never seen it before gave you a really good like excuse to just explain it to everyone and for yeah. me, like it's the same way as if you, you know, when in like TV shows, if you where they take a new character. And they have to introduce them to like a team. Or a world or something. Yeah, and that's how they do it. They like, sort of go, oh look, this character's new, so we have to explain everything to them. Which is pretty handy. Who are you looking at now? Now I'm looking at the woman who plays her mother, Marcia Gay Harden, because I recognise her. I didn't know where I recognised her from, and it turns out I think I probably recognise her from The Mist. What, the TV show or the film? No, no, the film. Uh, no, I've rec- I really recognise her from something else. Like, as soon as she came on screen, I was like, oh, yeah, it's you. And then I thought, well, who is it? Oh, it'll be Fifty Shades of Grey. That's why you recognise her. That was probably... I've actually seen that, genuinely. And um, Brett Goldstein talks about this in his podcast. It's got a brilliant ending. So when they first meet, it's like they're in a lift. And I think it's... She says... When they first meet, she says, Christian. And he says... Shit, what's her name? (laughs) Anastasia or something like Anna or something like that. And then right at the end, she decides to leave him. She gets in the lift, and the lift doors are shut. And he goes, "Uh, yeah, no, that's it. He goes, Anastasia. And she goes, Christian. And then the door's shut. I'm like, oh, that's genuinely brilliant. I really like... Anyway, that's less about Fifty Shades of Grey. Um, Yeah, so with it, Bliss is... She lives in a town called Bodine in Texas. And her mum is forcing her to go to like all these beauty pageants and stuff. 
as genuinely quite it's a really nice restaurant not far from here that's called Bodine's <laughs> oh B-O-D-E-A-N yeah, and yeah. they do like barbecue stuff yeah yeah it's like when American you say not theme. far from here do you mean it's in Soho there's no, definitely I mean one in, in Soho Tui there's one in Tui Perhaps, I think it must be a chain then because there's, there's one because I, when I worked in Soho for those like two weeks there was um was that when you were working on like making sure there were subtitles <laughs> making sure I was watching The Hobbit 3 four times in one week I mean to be fair I've seen it three times and that was really enough over the course of about six years I have done worse things for money that's true because I paid you that money <laughs> <laughs> it was a great weekend for me um, not so much for you <laughs> I found it hard to sit down for a week or so <laughs> <laughs> still a lot of money <laughs> Bill's got to get peed um, yeah so uh, and then Bliss sort of I can't remember how they how, they, how she finds out that it's a, that's it she goes shopping and she's buying like a dress and stuff and they go into a weird like alternative shop and her mum doesn't want to buy her the boots and then while she's <laughs> paying it's a shop that also sells bongs oh yeah that she thinks of vases or vases um, and then the three girls come <laughs> roll look at in. those vases <laughs> <laughs> ooh pretty vases uh, yeah I mean they have water in them but <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to feed the plants um so yeah and then these three girls roll it off yeah because when when the film started I was surprised because it starts off in like a beauty pageant yeah and I was just like uh uh, what (laughs) because I was like oh it's going to start off like just go roller skating that's the point oh so you knew it was a roller skating thing because I I heard a review of it like you've seen the poster right (laughs) no what's the poster for it the poster doesn't really give away that she's on roller blades. Okay, she's got elbow pads and a, a crash helmet on. Yeah, but that's definitely not a beauty pageant. <laughs> <laughs> it could be a health and safety beauty pageant. Can you imagine how boring that's that would be? That's probably a thing. That's probably a thing, isn't it? Among, like, um... What, health and safety Health and safety balls. department. <laughs> health and safety beauty award. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the then she tries... The t- hazard. <laughs> Oh, the way that pipe stuck out really <laughs> caught Jocelyn's ankle. It was lovely. <laughs> um, so she tries out for this roller derby team after having watched it. And I, I didn't realise, Kristen Wiig. Fucking Kristen Wiig showed up. I was like, oh, it's that woman. Because I have this really, really weird thing with Kristen Wiig. Like, I really like her. I love watching her and stuff. As soon as I see her, her name goes up my brain. <laughs> and it takes me a good half an hour to go... Fuck me, what is your name? Ah, Kristen Wiig. So I'm, uh, I'm almost the same with Ellen Page in that I like everything that I've seen her in, but because she's been in so many like games and things, I just assume that she's in them all. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, there's a woman talking. Yeah, it's probably Ellen Page. In the same way that I'm like, oh, yeah, that male voice, that, that's uh, either Matthew Mercer or Nolan North. <laughs> <laughs> there are two voice actors for men and one for women, and that's Ellen Page. I'd say the other the other ones that um, I hear mixed up is uh, Jimmy Fallon and Jimmy Kimmel, and then Jimmy Fallon's in this, and I was like, oh, it's Jimmy Kim. Oh, is fuck, Jimmy is it? And Kimmel? I was sat there freezing. I was like, I'm not googling this. I'm absolutely working this out. I was like, is this Kimmel? He gets to the credits and he's like, <laughs> Fallon. That <laughs> <laughs> in the end, I was like, I can't. Remember. So I googled it. I was like, yeah, no, it's Fallon. Well, that's it. It was that was also like another surprise for me. I was like, so I've only seen like the clips of him on the talk shows, and I've just been like. What else does he do? Uh, he's just a talk show host, I think. I don't know if he does stand-up, actually. Well, let's look at it on your screen together, which is still weird. <laughs> like, I, I'm, not even, I'm not even looking at my... I don't know if I'm still recording. Uh, American comedian, actor, TV host, singer, writer, and producer. Wow, it sounds oh, like right. he was on... Jim Corden does. <laughs> oh, fuck off. <laughs> he was on SNL. I actually didn't know that. I only know him from... Uh, I only know from his own Late show. Night with Jimmy Fallon. Uh, he left the program. Oh, he was in Taxi, which is the remake of that French film that we watched with Jack. Do you remember? What, you might not Crazy have been... Taxi? No, no, it's literally it's called Taxi, and it's about the taxi driver. Every time he stops and lets his passenger out, they get out and throw up. Because yes. he drives so I know, I think, mad. I don't, I don't remember. We had a lot to drink, I think. That doesn't sound like that. And then Fever Pitch is a remake of... Uh, for pitch the one that, that like Colin the main shit I'm doing the main guy in that Colin Firth who went to my school <laughs> oh really Colin Firth time went to my school oh yeah 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 I'm the same age as Colin fucking Firth I don't know how old is Colin Firth he's uh, 26 <laughs> <laughs> I hope <laughs> 
Uh, I mean, then he's just aged badly. <laughs> um. So yeah, so Bliss, she lies about her age, tries out for the the Hurl Scouts, who are like the worst team in the league. Um, the thing I really actually quite liked all of the punny names yeah, that they had. I really enjoyed that. I can't. I can't remember Smashley two of that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was I, can, my I can only remember Hurl Scouts and Holy Rollers. That's the only two I can remember. Uh, Iron Maven, Rosa Sparks. She was a good one. That was Eve as well. Yeah, yeah. The thing is, it's weird because I every time I see her in a film, I recognise her instantly, and I don't know why because I. I've listened to maybe three of her songs and seen one music video. <laughs> I but only, I still always recognise her when she's in stuff. I only knew who she was because she was in a Bond game. I think she was in like Everything or Nothing, which was like a PS2. Oh, was that the? Not it wasn't a tie-in. It was like a standalone game story. Uh, yeah. It was really I'm, weird because that was sure only. Was I think that was one of the only Bond games on PS2 that I never played. Oh, it was br- I was thinking about it the other day actually. It was um, absolutely brilliant. But they fully, they really went for it. They had like a whole, they had like a theme song and everything. Like, yeah, they, they, as if it was an actual film. They had the likenesses of like John Cleese, Judy Dench, Pierce Brosnan, Willem Dafoe. He was another one who was in it. Uh, Jaws. They actually had like Richard Keel, obviously not. Uh, I might be. Uh, I'll tell you what. I'm thinking the wrong person. I'm thinking of Maya. That's it. Maya Starling. Oh wow! Well, I mean, I can see why you think they're the same person, but I just had it in my head because I knew it was a, a musician who showed up. I was pretty sure it was Eve. I but think I've noticed this recent when musicians turn up in films, they're generally not terrible at acting. I'm trying to think of who else is that, like happened with recently. Um, well, no, Ed from Sheeran, the, the in Penny Bridget Jones's baby. Oh, she Ed Sheeran's apparently in that. You know the new Beatles film yesterday. The one with Tamwar in it. Yeah, it took. Do you know how long it took me? I was sitting watching the trailer in the cinema, just going like, "I know you." Fucking recognise him. My mum says I look like Tamwar. Just let that sink in. <laughs> I mean, quite apart from pigmentation, I don't think we look very similar at all. No, he's quite skinny. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and he has less facial hair. Mostly, it's the skinny thing. Yeah, no, that that is the, the biggest, biggest difference between <laughs> yeah. me and the guy who plays Tamwar in EastEnders. I mean, he wasn't he, uh, was, he wasn't wearing glasses on the Graham Norton show, so maybe there's that too. Another person who my mum and also my mother-in-law think I look like, Ramesh Ranganathan. That's good. <laughs> I'm white and I don't have a lazy eye. How do I look like Ramesh Ranganathan? <laughs> Does... Do they both wear... Dark tinted glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not rose tinted glasses. Am I right? Ew. I don't really know what that means. This is the thing. Um, I've lost where I was with Whip It. I think we got to maybe who was in it. <laughs> oh no, we, we got to a bit like she tries out for the. Uh, oh yeah, she just lied team. about her age. Yeah, but she does it like instinctively. As soon as someone asks her, she's like, "Yep, twenty-one." I no, she says twenty. Three because twenty one would be too obvious. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Or she said twenty two. Which is true. Which is true. Because I, when I was lying about my age when I was sixteen, to buy cigarettes, I never said I was sixteen. I never said I was eighteen. I was always just like, oh yeah, no, I'm like nineteen. And then I turned twenty one, and then I was like, yeah, I'm eighteen. <laughs> that one time they asked me for ID, and I was just like, yeah, yeah, eighteen. I was like, prove it. And I was like, fucking no. If I show you my ID, it's weird. <laughs> I um I only ever lied about my age to buy um films. I really I remember being fourteen and being in Woolworths and buying and trying to uh, just like holding Shaun of the Dead for ages. Like, oh, I've got a risky and I thought fuck it, might as well give it a go. And he was like, How old are you? I'm like, oh, 15. Was, When's your birthday? I went, twenty third of March, nineteen ninety two Literally like that and he went yeah, all right then. <laughs> Scanned it through. I was like, Fuck it. The first yes. time I went to see Austin Powers Gold Member in the cinema. Fuck it out. That's the first time because that was before. Two thousand and three. That was. I that think. was about, I think, a year before they brought out twelve A films. Wait, no, that can't be right because. Well, I was eleven. Twelve, 12 A came out. Um, the first ever twelve A was um, Southampton. Southampton. <laughs> Talking about fucking Spider Man. 
There you go. Austin Powers Goldman. But no, because I went, to, I went to see Spider Man before it was a 12A. It came out halfway oh, yeah, through yeah, Spider-Man's right. run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did that, didn't they? It yeah. was really fun because I lied about my age to go see Austin Powers because I was eleven, and then my parents took me to see Spider-Man. They lied about my age, and my dad nearly fucked it up. <laughs> like, you know when they just go, "Ah, oh, how old are you?" And I was just like, twelve. <laughs> they came to my dad. He went eleven. <laughs> and they went, "Oh no, 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 no. he's twelve. <laughs> he just had a birthday." And I was just like. I didn't fuck this up yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Mark Herman told the story on, on his podcast once that um, his dad, he took him to see, it was a certificate film, and I think a certificate, you had to be 14 and over. Um, and he was 13, I think, or like 12 or something. So they went up to the bicycle and he went, oh, his dad went, oh, two tickets, and the guy looks down and goes, oh, is he 14? And Mark Herman's dad, Mark Herman's dad just went, just gestured to him like here he is and he went yeah that's fine because he didn't lie to him so he, he technically he wasn't in the wrong he didn't lie he just didn't say anything <laughs> yeah I suppose in. that works yeah <laughs> um, but yeah so she joins the team and turns out she's really fucking good at it but she's got to keep it a secret from her parents because they want her to well her mum at least wants her to be a, a beauty pageant queen her dad who you'll recognise your friend of mine uh, from Home Alone. You've not seen Home Alone? I have seen it, but I've seen it like once. Are you st- what do you do at Christmas? Star Wars. But, I mean, fine, but... You've only seen Home Alone once? Yeah. What about Home Alone 2? No. You haven't seen Home Alone 2? No. I don't know if I can carry on doing this with you. You haven't seen this as England, so... Mm. I think I'm going to go. <laughs> I think I'm just going to get in my car. I think you should leave. <laughs> uh, I guess that means we're about halfway through the podcast. <laughs> I don't think it's even halfway. I'd say maybe a third. <laughs> Probably just a, a soft third. <laughs> uh, so, what film are we talking about? <laughs> we're still talking about Whip It. <laughs> You've offered nothing so far. You take over. She lied about her age. Brilliant. Right, so she gets a boyfriend who's in a band. He goes off on tour. Oh, he's a... I didn't like... As soon as he came on screen, I was like... He's a cunt. dick. Because he... Do you know who he reminded me of? Dean. <laughs> <laughs> he's not as... No, Dean's all right. He's not, Dean's you know, you know, not Dean, as bad Dean's as him. Dean's not as bad as him, but, like, just the way he looked and talked and acted... <laughs> they're all very similar. Just, just to clear things up, we are talking, obviously, about Dean from Gilmore Girls. Not just some guy with <laughs> that, that, that fucking Dean. <laughs> uh, he fucks off on tour. Yeah, do you know what she needs? She needs a Jess. That's very true. Everyone needs a Jess. <laughs> Jess is. I uh, know oh, he's misunderstood. I was going to say he's a bit more rebellious, but I'd, I'd say he's probably not. He's just a bit more, a bit misunderstood. He's just a bit more straight to the point, straightforward. Mm. Good lad. Mm. Like him. Mm. Gets pushed into a lake by Luke we, I'd completely forgotten that happened we were watching that episode the other day it caught me off guard I was pissing myself laughing yeah I was watching the oh, most the, the episode I've watched most recently was I think it was the episode where oh the basket episode the, where they make the baskets and like auction them off and stuff oh yeah and it's just one of Jess's lines in that is like this is where Luke pushed me in the lake you can do it if you want. I hear it's cathartic. <laughs> no, I'm just like, <laughs> love that. Ah, oh. um, well, that's the episodic like us bringing up Gilmore Girls. <laughs> uh, the relationship between Bliss and well, his name's Oliver, isn't it? I thought was actually pretty well done. Like the bit where they're in the swimming pool and they're just swimming around and kissing each other and taking their clothes off. Oh, that was amazing. Yeah, really, really like that. Like, I think it was a really well-told story of, like, their age. And it was so... Because it seemed... I'm guessing it was maybe her first relationship. Boyfriend, yeah. I think so. I think that's... that's and also, it's that whole, like, oh, it's the cool kid from the band. Yeah. Like, go for it. Like, well, is he? He's the bassist, isn't he? From yeah, of his guitar. brother's band. That's it. Them. Yeah, with his weird shirt that's just got a high score from a pinball machine on it. Oh, that was fucking 
wank, wasn't it? <laughs> Absolute bullshit. Oh, it's that that sort of annoying shit that you do as a teenager. Right? I knew someone who, on his bed, he had. A, was it notches in the bedpost? No, it was worse. Like that, you can at least vaguely respect. This, it was a date, and it was like, oh, it's on like. Was he something nailing made, condoms to the head no. <laughs> <Sorry, mate>. That's <laughs> what I used to do. But, <laughs> but apparently it's weird, and then it starts to smell. Like, oh, <laughs> that's that's rotten. It was something like twentieth of May, nineteen ninety five, something like that. And I asked him about it one day, and he was like, "Ah, oh, that's uh, that's my conversation starter." I was like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" I was like, "Oh, well, if I got a girl around, we're just lying there, just chatting as you, as you do when you're 15 and she looks like, oh, what, what's that date for? So I can say to her, ah, that's the date that if I ever discover a time machine, I'm going back to, because that's the date that Nirvana recorded Unplugged. I was like, fuck off, that is ridiculous. That's such a wanky reason. Really and also, pathetic if she doesn't understand that time travel, you go back to exactly the same place you are, and so you'd be that's somewhere, so you'd you'd be somewhere in Tanhandu <laughs> being like, Nirvana Well, now, now right I need now. to get to New York. <laughs> Yeah, by the time you fucking get there, they'll be finished. <laughs> oh, it was just fucking. So yeah, the 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 notes like sewed into his jacket, and it's what was it three million eight hundred fifty. Yeah, it's like it's like really, a fairly impressive score, I imagine. <laughs> well, they, she has a go, doesn't she? And she only gets the sort of like twenty thousand or something like that. But uh, I don't know. But, yeah, it's like one of those weird like. I just need to probably. What well, it would be? It would just be like oh, weird flex. <laughs> Um, so she sees is she is it in a magazine is it a magazine she sees a picture of him it's on their website on like their website that's it website. that's it uh, and which is weird because it's definitely one of those like pre-squarespace days where it's just like some random like geo sites or something <laughs> like <a> Wix <laughs> just like but even before I've MySpace. got some I've got some pictures <laughs> Uh, so he, she sees a picture of uh, Oliver standing with a girl who's wearing the t-shirt that she has given him and she burns his jacket and I thought that's, that's for you and actually the, the way that whole storyline rounds up is that uh, you know, on well, the night of the championship match because this went out with her goes, friend yeah yeah oh, like essentially over it because she goes off after Oliver because one of the roller derbies gets raided that's right. That's it. Okay. I it's, it's, it's over like it? it's over like the fire marshal capacity. That's it. Yeah. Which is, I guess, a thing. In the uh, the only thing I, I can relate to fire marshals is it's in that D twelve song. Yeah, that's a, that's all D12. I can think of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fire marshals know the venue's too small. People are wall to wall. What fucking song is that? One shot, two shot. We're going to have to listen to that once we finish recording. Absolutely fine. Okay, you. <laughs> We're just experimenting with your... No, 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 no. Google no, no, no. He's, he's actually, actually doing it. No, he's actually fucking listening. <laughs> we'll get a coffee right. <laughs> um, yeah, like, that was a... That's it, because there's always, I think, always a scene like that when they introduce two best friends in a film. There's always a scene that makes them drift apart. Not even drift apart, they get taken apart by one getting arrested and the other one getting away. Yeah. Because that's just before the... Swimming pool scene, I think. No, it's just after. No, I thought it they was... run away to the swimming pool. Yeah, that's why I thought. Yeah, they ran away from the venue to the swimming pool. Oh, sorry, right. I, see what I did say yeah. before. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know which bit you. <laughs> yeah, no, the the whole fire marshal thing. That's before. Yeah. Because what's her friend's name? Pash. Because I really liked her throughout the film. Yeah, like that was. She was good. She was brilliant. Like just, I think there was a scene of them like in the diner, just dancing and singing. And I was like. Wow. Why are waitresses in this country not so happy? Because <laughs> <laughs> they're in this country. Um, but, yeah, so the, but while this is going on, she's been keeping the secret from her parents and she's sort of grown away from the... Uh, the, the, the whole thing, uh, it, it really captures that time of like wanting to go off and do your own thing and your parents having... A different like, idea of what yeah, it should be. Not that I never really experienced that. They were just sort of like, yeah, do what you want. Yeah, I didn't really. I didn't really go through. Nobody I care. I, I, I was one of those weird. He just like went. My life doesn't suck enough, so I'm angry about it. <laughs> it was <laughs> so weird. Like people I knew had like genuine shit going. I was just like, 
Yeah, me too. Over the suburbs. <laughs> yeah, me too. I live in like a really nice little village where nothing really happens. There's no crime, violence. There's not really. We don't have gangs. We have like there are a couple of kids who ride bikes sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just there, like, yeah, but my life sucks. <laughs> like, it was weird because I've talked to my parents about it since, and like they're just like, oh, what? Like, why were you such angry? So angry as you? Like, because basically I had nothing to complain about. <laughs> doesn't make sense. It's so weird, but that's just like, teenagers are weird. Yeah. Yeah, completely. But the... Because this the, is like, sh this is, because I, I get the feeling that Bliss wasn't really being forced into it. She was just kind of going along with it. Mm. Yeah, but there's the whole scene, isn't it? Between her and her mum saying, oh, if you're doing this pageant just for me, or Done. are you doing it for yourself? And she's like, oh no, yeah, no, it's fine, I'll, I'll, I'll do it for myself then. And then later on, she goes, you're doing this for me. And she's like, yeah. Which I thought, you know. That's the, the whole thing like, with your parents, I really, really cause enjoy. Because throughout, I think, in the first just, half... Just to make it clear <laughs> first what's happening. half of the film, I think you're almost guided towards disliking the mother. Because hmm. seeing... I think until you she think, was a, you, she until was a you, beauty queen. Until Bliss... I think is on the way back from Roller Derby or she stayed like she stayed out or something and she sees her mum delivering mail yeah you never know that she has something other than being a beauty mum and then you see that and you sort of go oh fuck oh Actually, shit like yeah. it's just it's not like oh we're like the rich beauty pageant mums it's just like a oh she's just a normal person who yeah Fuck, that, well, I, I guess that thinks really her really daughter like, because it could just be that Bliss wanted to do it when she was as young as her sister, who clearly is really super into it, and then just never sort of said, "Oh, this actually isn't really for, for me. me." That's a really good point. That didn't actually occur to me last night while I was watching it, but that's a really good point. I mean, I've had like a week to think about this. No, so. no. <laughs> um. There's just uh, when you actually thinking about it, there's so many like different plot lines between the, there's the rivalry between her and um, oh who's the main the main the main it, girl off of uh, the other team what's what's her name Bloody Holly no no it's Smashley Simpson no no because that's Drew Barrymore's character she's the one that keeps getting <laughs> injured uh, oh yeah like Iron think... Maven that's it isn't it Is, she's Iron Maven yeah yeah because it's yeah, Iron yeah. Maiden. It's Juliette Lewis. Yeah, and it was... Because it's almost like every single character relationship that's, like... that gets, like, screen time on its own seems it's to really almost worse. have a plot line. Because mm. it's, it's almost like the overarching story doesn't really matter. It's more just the character the stuff. Between them all. Like, even with... Um... Which is basically real life. Because in real life, you, you don't sort of go, ah, oh, this arc of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Even Maggie Mayhem was like, you know, she shows up and then she's got a son. And Blaze is like, I didn't even know you were a, a mum or whatever. So Everyone's really, does have Every, their moment got, to... It's almost like everyone has something else. Yeah. Um, so yeah, then, so they then all, it, they all come together, they do the roller derby, they beat the shit out of each other and they go home bruised. It, but happy. It's wicked. It's, we should explain the title as well. So the whip, whip it comes from. There's a certain move that their, their coach keeps referring to his playbook, um, and which they ignore until they do it once and go, "Oh fuck!" Well, he, he tells the other team right here, "Use my play. I want to prove to them this is going to work." And they get absolutely smashed up. Right now, pay attention to me. But there's a move in roller derby called whip it, which is where someone, one of the other players, grabs. The person who's got to go past the pack and, and just slings them, fucks them straight up the the track. Yeah, but which was amazing. There was a point. There was a double whip, and the double whip was beautiful. When they, she grabs the leg, and they yeah, do that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm I'm not gonna lie to you. I was on my own. My fiance's on a, a hen do. I had a few beers. I don't know why. Every time they whipped, I started crying. <laughs> I've absolutely no idea why. I just found it really moving. I don't know. Why. It's like. Right, fuck you, come on, get up there. I don't understand. But it was like every time she reached out, she grabs it and 
swings around, flings up the track, and it's just this sudden power as she comes round the I corner. I can see why you don't watch really a lot of sports. sports. <laughs> oh, you know, yeah. Like, <laughs> you'd be, fu- I, I, you'd I be exhausted UFC. emotionally. <laughs> <laughs> when I watch UFC, it's like, oh, God, I'm bleeding that out. <laughs> why is that so much blood? <laughs> Yeah, I don't really understand why, but I I just found that really moving. There was, I think no, I think there was a moment that got me in there somewhere, but I can't remember what it was. Loads, loads in here for me. I think, I think it, was it was mostly in like the final act. I think. Yeah, it was, I hadn't had a couple of beers the, when I watched it. I watched it like eleven o'clock in the morning, <laughs> so I was pretty like, if I start drinking now, I'm done. For it. <laughs> the, but no, like the stuff with um, her parents, like with her dad particularly. When that was it, when her dad is buying her baseball card. Not baseball card. Oh, yeah, no, it's basically card. all oh. the shit with the dad. That's yes. all, like, just in that sort of, the I think final third. when might he... say a lot about us rather than, than the film. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think he was just... I'll have to change it to change the name of the podcast to Daddy Issues. <laughs> Co-dads. <laughs> Co-parents. Co-parents. <laughs> we'll just have to get someone, to, we'll just need to find people to start a parenting podcast. Um, I really like how this subverts other sports movies. So, I mean, spoilers, obviously. They don't win. She dumps the boyfriend and stays separate. It's like, no, you really fucked up. Yeah. I don't want to fucking know you. And she goes off and just does the, the championship. Like, fucking brilliant. Well, what I like is uh, right at the... In their first match, they cheer about being second place. So, like, right in their first match, they're like, yeah, but we're second. And they're like, uh, two. <laughs> But then they come second in the championship, and they're like, "Yeah, hey, second place." And it's like, We're it's a really two. nice cool We're number two. So, because they're doing the same chant, but they're genuinely like the second place team. Yeah. But yeah. M- no, because most sports movies have to be like a zero to hero sort of thing. Yeah. But or like I really a, like the like the st- like at the start you're like you're a fallen star, and then you have to like climb your way back up to the top. It's like a few years ago there was a documentary. I can't, oh shit, I can't remember what it was called, but it was about Rush. <laughs> It was about the America American Samoan football team who were consistently the worst football team in the world and they had a year where their goal was We're talking football or American yeah, football. football. No look like, yeah, football, our football. Um proper football. Yeah. The, 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 the one real. where you play with your feet. <laughs> <laughs> the one where you don't touch it with your fucking hands. Unless you're the goalkeeper, that's allowed. Um As long as you stand on your line. Their, this team's sole aim was not to like win the championship but just it was to not, not be last and apparently it's a really good documentary I've not seen it but um, I, I heard about it on uh, Ellis James and John Robbins recently have started a, a podcast on um, uh, Radio 5 Live uh, and they <laughs> mentioned it because Austin Powers gold record. yeah of course I did. I'm, oh, what's it called? It. Oh, I'm gonna remember it. Next goal wins. That's it. Uh, the film that sounds Chronicles. like every time I played football as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the film chronicles the national football team, American Samoa, as they try to recover from the indignity of being known as one of the weakest football teams in the world and to qualify for the 2014 World Cup. Which sounds brilliant. Yeah, that sounds like something I might actually like. Uh, Drew Barrymore. What do you know about Drew Barrymore? She is in films. Did you know? Has directed one. Did you know that she was doing cocaine at the age of nine? And did you know that? Got to start somewhere. At the the age of thirteen, she went to rehab. That's crazy. Being like, because that must have been what in the eighties or nineties. Well, I think ET was nineties, wasn't she? Wasn't it? Was it? I thought it was. No, sorry, yeah. E.T. was the... Yeah, so E.T. 1982, directed by Steven Spielberg. Who's her godfather, by the way? Um, Clearly not protective enough. <laughs> fucking hell, all right. Here we go. Uh, nope, that's not where it is. Where is it? I just, I just read a bit about her, about how, like, um, at the age of... Probably in that such, 1990s bit, maybe. Uh, she was 70, posed new, blah, blah, blah. Oh, it might be in the night I think it was. Like I, I, oh, I've seen the word cocaine somewhere in here. Nope, canine. That's what that <laughs> says. Very, very different words. Uh, Maybe it's in that childhood section. It possibly is. Here we go. Um, she described. Suicide. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, in the wake of her sudden stardom, 
Barrymore endured a notoriously troubled childhood. She was a regular at the Racy Studio 54, which is a club, as a young girl, and her nightlife and constant party and became a popular subject with the media. She was placed in rehab at the age of 13. Spent 18 months in an institution for the mentally ill. A suicide attempt at 14 put her back in rehab. Followed by a three month stay with singer Dave Crosby and his wife. That's great. It must have been. I can't imagine shit like that happening now. Because there's such a. Like, spotlight on Hollywood. Especially recently. Fucking hell. But that that is an. In- in- I, 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 I mean, to come I through didn't... and still be a functioning adult is <laughs> pretty impressive. Well, you think about, like, River Phoenix, you know? Well, he didn't make it. And the. Uh, was it one of the Corys from. Um, Lost Boys, he's dead, isn't he? Corey Feldman? No, Corey... Corey Haim. Is he dead? Is Corey Haim dead? I'm pretty sure it was like one of the, you know, a child star that was in a bit of bother. Yeah, he... Oh, oh no, he died in 2010. Of pneumonia. Oh, bloody hell. I'm pretty sure he had a... <coughs> he struggled a bit. Because it was him and Corey Feldman who was... They all said they they said they were sexually abused at points as well. Yeah, that's nice oh, cheerful yeah. though. Whip it's lovely, so. <laughs> yeah, there's all, there always has to be something on this podcast <laughs> that just, just brings, brings it, it down. down. Brings it back down to reality. You can't so, just enjoy 110 minutes of <laughs> just happiness. I I love this film. I really really like it. I this is probably a film that I will genuinely go back and watch again. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm going to show it to Lisa. I think Lisa's really going to like it. But I think it was nice because there's no, because it's not one of those films that has like a super strong message apart from just like do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, pretty much. Definitely. What I like is that it also has that like I don't know because it when in the first half of the film I thought the parents were very much like I'm trying to think of a better example than just being like like Richard and Emily. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, like certainly from her. Right? Yeah, like, the dad, you're a bit like, oh, he probably doesn't give a shit. But. Yeah, and especially when she finds out like his secret of like just being like, you know, I say I'm like working late and I just come and I watch football in the van, and like, it just, it's just like quite a nice, happy family. And I mean the three or four scenes that her younger sister Irene are also great (laughs) it's like a couple at the beginning and one at the end it's just quite a nice feel good story yeah I don't know can we just do it again next week feel good I don't know about feel good I think it's a decent coming of age you feel good after it because you're like yeah but it does have its struggles the thing is I think I'm especially heightened towards being like it's a feel good film for a director's debut (laughs) Do you think about the misery we've endured? Yeah. So, yeah. Oh God. Some of the. What have we got coming up? What's in the next one then? I think we're wrapping up here. So uh, what, what's? Well, next, next on Copa is it's Glee Up Charlie. There you go. Feel good. If ever you need it. Yeah. Feel good or feel fucking cheated. To be quite honest. <laughs> feel ripped off. Well, I didn't know you felt that way about Turn Up Charlie. That's not what you said on the podcast. Turn Up Charlie. I've got no bother with because cyber dogs in it. <laughs> Uh, and then after that we've got Ridley Scott's first film oh, I'm intrigued I'm intrigued I'm intrigued I'm intrigued because I've been thinking about Alien recently because uh, you remember the um, the film re-roll podcast where they play through films as an RPG yeah yeah, but yeah. I started listening to the uh, Alien episode of that and it got me oh, I really want to watch Alien and Aliens again you need to listen to the John Wick one of that yeah like no, the John Wick one is awesome so yeah, we'll end this with with an advert for another podcast. Yeah, uh, yeah. So really, has got next and Glee and Turn Up Charlie for co-pilot. Fantastic. Yeah, that'll do. No, so no. How are we ending this one now that we're in the same room? I just... A round of applause. I feel. I literally, I just hit myself in the face. <laughs> I just want to see it's how funny because I... I can see on both monitors the bars <laughs> jumping up as I do that. Anyway, <laughs> that'll do. Fuck off. Bye.